Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about different types of waves behaviors. Um, in the last couple of videos we were talking about, you know, what is a wave, what are the properties of a wave, the different types of wave, transverse, longitudinal, mechanical, electromagnetic, um, the different parts of those waves, wavelength, frequency, um, doing calculations with the wave equation. So now we're going to move on to talking about um, wave behaviors and these wave behaviors we're going to talk about apply to all types of waves um, and so we're going to talk about reflection, refraction, and diffraction in this video and then later on we'll talk about superposition and interference. Now again uh, these apply to any type of wave whether it's a water wave or a sound wave, a light wave, um, any type of wave can experience these behaviors and so the first thing we're going to talk about is reflection before we talk about that, um, the idea here is that we want to know how uh, how do waves behave when they meet a boundary. And so you might ask, what do I mean by a boundary? Well, a boundary is just a separation, um, a line of separation between two different uh, substances or two different uh, materials. And so we want to know what happens when a wave strikes a boundary. So for example, here you can see there's a wave on a string and it goes in and it hits uh, a pole right here and one end of the string is tied to the pole this point right here this is the boundary that is the line that separates the two materials in this case the string and the pole um, if you imagine like you know shining a, a laser into a glass of water the boundary would be the line between uh, the water and the air so just you know I can't draw but let me give you a simple example if I can do a smaller line Okay, so imagine if this was a cup of water, right? So let's just pretend that this is a cup of water. There's water down here, and there's air up top. Um, the boundary in this case would be this line right here. Okay, so it is the line that separates the air from the water in this case, or the line of separation between two different media. Uh, and when I say media, media is just the plural of medium. And remember, a medium is whatever the wave is traveling through. So in this case, we have two different media. We have air and we have water. And so if you imagine a laser shining into a cup of water like this, uh, the boundary is the line between the air and the water, and the air and the water are the, the two different media. And so lots of things can happen uh, when a wave tries to travel from one media into another, in other words, when it hits a boundary. And so we're going to talk about some of those things. Um, again, reflection, refraction, and diffraction are the three wave behaviors we're going to talk about in this video. Okay, so uh, let's start with reflection. Reflection is a very simple type of um, wave behavior. Most people understand what reflection is. You can read what it says in the notes. Um, it says reflection occurs when a wave encounters the boundary between the two media of very different densities, causing it to reverse direction. Okay. And so you see reflection every time you look in a mirror, you're experiencing reflection. Okay. In, other, in simple terms, when a wave hits a boundary and bounces off um, and comes back, that is an example of reflection. And so here, in this picture, you can imagine um, shining like a laser uh, at a mirror. You can see that it comes in right here, and then it bounces off. Now, if you shine a, a laser right at a mirror, like head on, let's say, you know, let's say this is a mirror. If the laser beam comes straight on like this, then it's just going to get reflected exactly back in the same direction. Okay, if it comes in at an angle, you can see it's going to bounce like this. This angle right here is a 90 degree angle. And it's not that important that you know that, um, but there you go. And so reflection is very simple to understand. Um, you do need to know the examples of reflection. We talked about looking uh, in a mirror. Um, echoes, if you've ever gone to a canyon and you, you know, yell out and you can hear um, your voice come back. Um, that's an example of reflection because the sound wave goes out of your mouth and it usually bounces off of the, the canyon walls and then it goes back to your ears. Um, any type of motion sensor, any type of radar um, or sonar, um, just for example, um, when the police catch you speeding, they use like a radar gun that sends a radar wave out to your car and then it hits your car, reflects back to the gun, and that tells them how fast you're moving. 
Um, or we also use radar to detect like airplanes or storms. If you think like the Doppler radar that we use to detect uh, weather, those all rely on reflection. We send waves out, they hit something, reflect back to us, and then we use that information uh, to figure out what's going on. Um, sonar is used underwater by like submarines or dolphins or you know stuff like that. Um, and so, like I said before, reflection is probably the most basic type of wave behavior there is. And again, any type of wave can reflect. All of the wave behaviors we're talking about in this video apply to any type of wave. Again, whether that's sound wave, light wave, microwaves, x-rays, water waves, waves on a string, whatever. Um, and so let's go past reflection and talk about uh, reflection here in just a second. Um, first, we're just going to do a few basic examples with reflection. Um, so here we have a light shining on a mirror, and we want to know where is the light going to hit. Now, based off of what we talked about before, we know that the light is going to come in like this. It's going to hit the surface, and then remember when light hits at an angle, it makes a 90 degree angle coming out. And you could probably figure this out with some common sense, but when the light goes in, it's going to bounce straight off the mirror like this. And so the answer is going to be B. Okay, so on the next slide, we'll see the correct answer is B. And then just one more um, simple example. This is called a periscope. You can use this to see like underwater or over walls or something like this. Basically, um, you might have played with one of these when you were a kid. Um, basically, inside the periscope, there's two mirrors. And so if you're down here and you want to see like you know, out of the water, or over a wall or something, the way that works is the light is going to come in like so from the object that you're going to see, hit the mirror, and because the mirror is at an angle, it's going to come in at an angle and then it's going to bounce down like so. Okay, this mirror down here, there's a second mirror, is also at an angle, and so it's also going to reflect at a 90 degree angle into your eyes. And so by clever use of mirrors and reflection, you can use a periscope to see, uh, even if you don't have direct line of sight. So that's kind of a cool example of reflection. Okay, so reflection is a very basic wave behavior. Um, we're going to spend more time talking about refraction. Okay, so this is the definition of refraction. You can pause it here and read what it says as far as the definition goes. Um, but everything in the definition is important. It says when a wave is transmitted, now, if you don't know what transmit means, that basically means um, goes through, okay, goes, or maybe like goes into. When a wave goes into a new medium at an angle, it has to be at an angle, this causes the wave to either slow down or speed up, okay. So in other words, when a wave goes from one medium into another medium, its speed changes, Okay, so there is a speed change in a refraction. There's not a speed change in a reflection, but there is in a refraction. Now, you don't need to know why that is, um, but you do need to know that that speed change, either slowing the wave slowing down or the wave speeding up, causes the wave to change direction. Okay, and I'm going to write that as bend. Okay, it causes the wave to bend depending on the density of the new medium. Okay, so you only have refraction going from one medium into another medium. Um, and this is what we call refraction. Okay, and so there's some basic examples of this. Um, any type of lens uses refraction, whether it's your contact lenses, your eyeglasses, a magnifying glass, telescopes, all of those, anything involving a lens um, involves some type of refraction. Even if you don't wear glasses, there's still refraction happening when light goes into your eye um, because um, Inside every person's eye, there's a lens that bends the light and focuses the light onto your retina. So that uses refraction. Um, if you've ever seen this optical illusion that you see here uh, on the screen, where it looks like the pencil is bent, um, that optical illusion takes advantage of refraction. The pencil is obviously not bent, uh, but it looks bent because right here, up here there's air, down here there's water, this surface of the water is the boundary between those two media. And so when the, the light coming from the pencil goes 
from the water into the air, it, it bends. And because the light bends, because it's a wave, it bends. Because the light coming from the pencil bends, the pencil itself looks bent. Now, if you take the pencil out of the water, it's just going to look like a normal pencil. Okay, so this is an optical illusion uh, that uses refraction. Uh, and another example of um, refraction that you might be uh, familiar with is a prism separating light. If you've ever used a prism, you can shine a white light through it, and it kind of spreads it out uh, into its separate colors. And just one more example on the note of the prism separating light. The classic example of refraction is the rainbow. Okay, rainbows use refraction because light coming from the sun, when it goes into a water droplet, it hits um, the water droplet and um, it spreads out into its different colors uh, because of refraction. And you don't need to know the technical details of how that works, uh, but because it's going from one medium, the air, into another medium, the water, there's a change in wave speed there, and so it causes bending, and that's how we get rainbows. Okay, so refraction is a very interesting type of wave behavior. And again, I, I talk about light a lot, but refraction, you can have refraction for any type of wave. It's just that the most common example that you actually see, no pun intended, is with light. So I'm going to erase what's on the screen here. And we're going to see some examples. This picture is just like a, a picture showing a prism bending some light. You can see when it goes from one medium into another medium, when it goes into the plastic cube, it bends a little bit. And then when it goes, it hits this other boundary up here, it bends back the other way. Okay, so refraction is the bending of any type of wave when it goes from one medium to another because of the change in wave speed. Okay, so we are going to see a simulation in just a second. Um, the other thing you need to be able to do is predict which way a light wave is going to bend based off of what you know about the two media, the two materials. Okay, and so if you read what it says on this slide, um, it basically tells you how to make that prediction. When a wave travels into a denser medium, the angle gets closer to the normal. Now, what do I mean by the normal? Well, let me explain. Okay, so here is a simulation. This is a FET simulation. And up here we have uh, a laser pointer that we can adjust. Okay, now this line right here, this horizontal line, is what we call the boundary. Okay, it's a, remember it's a, the line that separates two different materials. This dotted line right here is what's called the normal line. Okay, I can take it away if I want to, but I want to have it in. So this dotted line is called the normal line. And normal is basically a fancy word for perpendicular. Um, and so this dotted line here is always at a 90 degree angle to the boundary. Now what you need to know is that we always measure uh, angles relative to the normal. And so if I want to know the angle of refraction here, okay, I can use a protractor. And the angle I care about is this angle right here between the beam itself and this dotted line. The, again, this is called the normal line. Now what you need to know is that when light goes into a denser material, um, it bends closer to the normal. So in other words, if you look at the simulation, let me kind of align it better. Okay, but if you look at the simulation, you can see that the incoming angle is about 30 degrees relative to the normal. Now up here we have air. Down here we have water. And if you look at this angle, you can see it's slightly less than, um, than 30 degrees. Uh, I can't tell exactly what that is. Um, I think it's like 24 degrees or something like that. And so here we, we have light going from air into water. Because it's going into a denser medium, it bends closer to the normal. Now if I were to reverse this, if I have water into air, Notice, by the way, if I have water into water, there is no refraction, and the two angles are the same uh, because they're the same materials. Uh, but if I have water into air, I'm going from a more dense to a less dense medium. And so the, um, the refraction angle bends away from uh, the normal line. So here you can see it comes in at a 30 degree angle. It refracts over here. There's some reflection that you can see on top, but it refracts at an angle that's much bigger than 30 degrees. Okay, and so when we say going from a higher to a lower density 
uh, material, it bends away from the normal. That's what we mean. By away from the normal, we mean this angle is bigger than this angle. Okay, so the, the easiest way for you to remember this is just to think, okay, the lowest density material you can have, the lowest density medium is air. And so if you're going from air into anything else, the anything else, it's probably going to be closer to the normal on that side. Um, because er basically everything is more dense than air. Okay, so um, the other way I think of it is that whichever side is denser, in this case it would be water, it has to be closer to the normal on that side. Okay, so if we're going from water into air, I know that the water side has to be closer to the normal than the other side. Okay, so I know this angle, because this is water and this is air down here, this angle has to be smaller than this angle. And again, if I flip those back, like so, we can see now I have water down here, so it has to be closer to the normal down here on the bottom. Okay, and so in the notes when it says, um, when a wave travels out of a denser medium into a less dense medium, the angle gets farther from the normal. That's what that's talking about. Okay, and you can see here, um, this picture kind of shows you what I'm talking about. Going from a more dense to a less dense medium, you bend away from the normal. This angle uh, from the normal gets bigger, and then vice versa. Okay. You can pause here and read what it says on the slide. It's basically the exact same thing. The only difference... Uh, on this slide to the previous slide is that here the boundary if you look closely the boundary is no longer horizontal it's actually vertical and so now this is the boundary and this dotted line going horizontally right here is now the normal okay and so it's kind of like the simulation but it's like turned on its face so it's a little bit different but it's the same basic principle we see going from air into glass, the angle from the normal gets smaller because you're going from a less dense to a more dense medium. And then w when they're reversed, it's the same thing in reverse. Okay, so just a few basic examples. Um, here we're asked to predict which way the light is going to travel. Light is going in from air into water. We just have to think, okay, which of those is more dense? Well. Air is the, less, the least dense thing we could have, so water is more dense than air. That means if it's more dense on the bottom, it's going to bend closer to the normal on the bottom, and so it should be C. Um, B is showing no bending at all, no refraction, which is only possible if they're the same uh, material, uh, which they're not, obviously. And A is not correct because, remember, whichever side has a denser medium, it should be closer to the normal on that side. Okay, so the answer here should be C. Okay, so you can see that there. And just to do one more, uh, or two more examples really quickly. Here, it's basically the same type of problem, except now this problem is, is turned uh, sideways, and so now the normal is going horizontally, and the boundary is going up and down. But it's the same basic principle. The light is going from glass into air. Remember, it should be closest to the normal, on whichever side is denser, and so I know that if this angle is 30 degrees on the glass side, on the air side it should be farther from the normal, um, because air is less dense than glass. And so B is out, because B is going in a straight line, showing no refraction. It has to be A, because I want to be farther from the normal on the side that's the least dense. Okay. All right. And then just really quickly, I want to see if you can figure out which way these are going to bend. Um, pause it here and kind of predict in your mind which way uh, it's going to bend um, for this example. And then I will draw it in in just a second. Remember, we're told medium 1 is more optically dense on the left and medium 1 is less optically dense on the right. Okay, so pause it here and see if you can figure out which way is it going to bend um, for the one on the left. And then which way is it going to bend for the one on the right? Okay, so the one on the left we'll do first. If medium 1 is more optically dense, that means medium 2 is less optically dense. Whichever side is more dense, it should be closer to the normal on that side. And so it should be going something like this when it goes into medium 2. Now, this is basically going to be the opposite. I, if medium 2 is more optically dense than medium 1, I want to bend closer to the normal 
probably something like this. And I'm exaggerating just so you can see easily what's happening. Um, but that's basically what's happening. Okay, so that is reflection and refraction. Uh, this video is getting kind of long, so I think in the next video I'll talk about diffraction, and then I'll talk about superposition and interference. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.